The Amazonian Princess gets a new Hot Toys release. That's because today's video we're going to be checking out the new Hot Toys release of the Justice League Wonder Woman 6 scale figure. We're also going to have a look at the deluxe version of this figure that's going to come included with a bunch of other things as well. Oh, but the first thing we do is take the measurements for Wonder Woman. So taking it right to the very top of her head, which is about there. Surprise, actually, I must say that she's 12 inches in height. I thought she was actually going to be a little bit taller than that. Translating that to centimeters, the figure stands at 30.6. Looking at the figure's display stand, uh, it is big, it is impressive, but those same traits almost kind of be a hindrance then to the display base because it is really big. When you take the figure, and the figure's already standing at 12 inches in height, when you put it in a detail, you only really have so much space to work with. Unfortunately then, when you factor in the additional height that the display stand gives you, well, now you're dealing with something completely different, and now you're dealing with a space that probably a standard detail isn't going to necessarily fit. You may then relegate to displaying Wonder Woman on a shelf, rather than necessarily displaying her confined inside of a case. I think in this instance, as great as this display stand is, I think I would have preferred something a little bit smaller personally. Uh, what I do though like is that it does have the rampway, and I don't know if this is the rampway from the, I'm trying to remember the name of it, the Wayne, the Fox, the Flying Fox or whatever the name of the ship was. Uh, I believe it is the rampway for that, and then you've got the Just League on the front placard which does look great. I mean, it's got this nice raised lettering to it, and down below you've got the front placard. And in this instance, you're gonna have Wonder Woman. I would be safe to assume uh, that you're probably gonna have, if you get the other Justice League members, it's probably gonna be the same continued display base trend. And the only thing that's going to be different in the in this case is going to be the front placard, depending on which character you're going to be getting, which will look good when you have all of these connected. I think it's the Flying Fox. But I do think, though, that the display base, as good as it is, is a little on the big side. I think in the instance, even at the giving the deluxe version a different treatment, maybe if they had given us just a standard oval-shaped display base as well, not just solely this, then if you wanted to display her, and you are somebody that likes display bases like I am, you don't necessarily have to use the big, bulky uh, version of this. Don't get me wrong, I do like this, I just think it takes up a lot of space. Now I know what you're thinking, you're seeing this Wonder Woman figure from Hot Toys and you're thinking to yourself, she does look a lot like the Batman v Superman Hot Toys Wonder Woman that we've already received. The question then comes, is there enough to her that would be worth picking her up, say if you've already picked up the Batman v Superman, or at the very least, I've already picked up the Batman v Superman Wonder Woman, 
is there enough different to this one that I feel like I'm not going to be displaying the exact same figure side by side? So, okay, we're going to bring in the Wonder Woman from Batman v Superman, and we're going to do a side by side comparison. And hopefully over the course of this video, I'll be able to give you a good definitive answer as to whether it's worth necessarily switching or upgrading, if you will, to a brand new Wonder Woman. Perhaps this one was perfectly fine. So hopefully over the course of this video, you guys will see the difference between the two different figures. Obviously the big one, the big decider here is gonna be her face sculpt. How is the figure gonna compare side by side? And it's not actually until I have gotten this figure here, the brand new release, that I'm starting now to look at the Batman v Superman release and feel even more for the fact that I don't feel like the figure looks like Gal Gadot. This one here, if you look at the left, the new one versus the right, the old one, you'll see that this one has a much thinner complexion. And it's this one here too, I've noticed, the Batman v Superman release. Her eyes seem a little bit higher. But one of the big things as well, seeing enough reviews of the Justice League uh, version of Wonder Woman, I've noticed though that watching enough reviews, and I did probably watch about five or six different reviews of this, this Wonder Woman, um, a lot of people commented specifically on one of the big problems being her nose. So I'm going to go ahead and spin the figures to the side to say that, yeah, perhaps I could see what they're talking about. Her Wonder Woman, the new Wonder Woman, does feature slightly more of a pointier nose than the one released before that. It's clearly also evident as well that her hair is drastically different, or I shouldn't say drastically different, but it does seem like it's a lighter shade of brown here, and she also is sporting more flat hair. There's very little less, less in the way of curls than the Batman v Superman one that we had gotten before. This, the hair length is roughly about the same, but the styling of hair, I think, is drastically different. So I thought to myself, let's go back and watch Justice League again. Not something that everybody would be agreeing to do, but going back and watching it again, she does definitely have a little bit more straighter hair than the curlier hair that we had gotten before with Batman v Superman. In addition to Wonder Woman's face looking quite drastically different, you'll also see as well that her tiara is a different color. The Batman v Superman one here on the right has a silver sported tiara, whereas the one from Justice League actually has gold. It looks like the molding is the same and it's simply just a color swap out from the silver to the gold. So that's again, another drastic change between the two. I will say though that the cheekbones, I think make the one on the left look a little bit more like Gal Gadot than this one here again on the right. The argument could certainly be made about the pointiness of her nose. That doesn't really bother me too much because I'm gonna be looking certainly at the, f the face forward of the figure I'm not always going to be pointing her to the side to, to spot the fact that maybe she does have a slightly more pointier nose than really what she should. And the best comparison I can also make too is bringing in the training version of Wonder Woman, which I happen to think was the best head sculpt that we've gotten from Gal Gadot, at least up to the point, let me just straighten out her feet here, at least up to the point that we didn't get this one on the side. I think between the two, and I did a full review of both of these figures. I think this one here was a better looking Gal Gadot. It had the higher cheekbones. I like the furrowed brow, even though it's not that much different than this one right here. And this one does also have the open mouth, but there was enough subtle changes to this one that I thought it looked more like Gal Gadot than the original Batman v Superman. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take, we'll keep her there for a second because we're always going to do a little bit more comparisons with her outfit. Let's grab the, the Justice League version of Wonder Woman, put her side by side. Let's see how well she stacks up with Wonder Woman here from the training. And looking at the two, there's not really that much difference, although... I think what could be helping the, the training version of Wonder Woman look a little bit more screen accurate is the way that they've sunken the brow. They've given her a much more serious, serious, sterner face, which this one unfortunately does not have. And it might just be that enough and that enough alone to make still the training armor Wonder Woman be the better looking head sculpt overall. 
Okay, so we'll go ahead and spin the figure sideways, looking at the two noses. It would be very obvious to see that, yeah, the Justice League Wonder Woman does have a pointier nose than the training version. So I still think, even though that this one I feel is a superior release to the one we got from Batman v Superman, I might still feel as if the training armor version of Wonder Woman might be the best head sculpt overall. Might have all of it might be just chalked up simply just to the uh, the, the the way the eyebrows are. Again, I like the more serious look on her face here. It's as if I wish I could almost just take this face off and put it with that hair to give us the definitive Wonder Woman because I do feel like this one is still the better of the three. But Potentially, we may get ourselves a Wonder Woman from the 84 Wonder Woman. Although, I do feel like, I think she's supposed to be getting a different costume altogether. So, it's not even just a case where we're going to be able to do a comparison. Because her outfit, much like the training version, is going to be different when we subsequently, of course, get the 84 release. From what I can tell, the bodies are exactly the same. I also wanted to see if the skin tone was identical. And it seems to be the case as well. When you look at the bodice the top of her armor here and her torso. It does look like it's the same similar sculpt, although this one does look a little bit closer to being almost a slightly orange tint versus this one here, which was a darker shade of red. This one's got a couple more color variations to it, some more of the yellows, a little bit more of the oranges, and this one here again is a little bit more stark to a, just a solid red. The skirt seems like it's similar enough I don't see too much different between the two. The, the material feels the exact same. Um, the harness, the strapping that she has, is actually inverted. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's flipped the other way around. This should be over on the side, and in this case, it's on this side. But other than that, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot different between the two. Uh, if we even like look at the little bracelet here that she's got on her bicep, which just unfortunately slides down a lot here on the Batman v Superman release, it looks like it's the exact same one, other than the Justice League does have some additional silver added there. You know, one can't also help but notice that the Batman v Superman gauntlets there are a slightly brighter shade of, of a metallic silver than what we got here for the Justice League. It would consider, I would consider swapping those two, because uh, I like that this one has a little bit more of a sheen to it than what we got here with the Justice Re release, the Justice League release. As you can see, is a little bit more muted. It's a little bit more scuffed up. I guess that would make sense based on how long she's been wearing the outfit, but it is a little bit more scuffed up between the two. The two figures' boots are exactly identical to one another. It's actually the exact same sort of color difference than the uh, the torsos actually had as well. So, much like the torsos, if I can just get her arm around the lasso there, the torsos have that additional little bit of orange sort of uh, shading or lighting added to it. The same can also be said for the boots. If you look at the two boots side by side, Batman v Superman's on the, on the right does have a darker shade of red. The gold looks like it's identical. It doesn't look like there's much different between the two there, but there's definitely a lot more orange happening here on the boots on this side than on this side here. So, having covered enough basis, hopefully, comparing the two figures, she may very well make another appearance over the course of this review. Um, again, I really do like the head sculpt. I think it's a vast improvement. I think it's a little bit better and a little bit more chiseled, if you will, than the one we got with the Batman v Superman release. It's still not 100% perfect, and of course, the pointier nose is something that a lot of people have noted uh, when they were looking at the figure themselves. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the head sculpt. It's enough of a change that I feel like I'm getting a different figure. I'm not simply just getting a figure with a slight tweak. Although, to be fair, really, all the body, other than a few swaps of paint, is identical to the one that we looked at before. But I do think the head sculpt is a step up. It's still not close to being as good as, uh, I would think, the training version. But I still think it's a good head sculpt. Um, the body is still encased in this rubber skin, so mileage may vary for how much posability you can get the figure into. I find that since having these figures, I'm a little bit more relaxed with moving things on it. Before, when I first initially got the Wonder Woman, I was so worried that it was going to break something inside here. Now, this is a rubber skin, so 
you may not want to have permanent poses where her arm is, say, for example, always bent. Generally, when I am displaying her, I usually just have the arms straight out. It's just more of a reassurance for me that I'm not going to be adding crease marks here to the rubber skin that they've added to the body. The body, basically from head to toe, is going to have this rubber skin to it. It feels like it's not going to be something that's going to give me problems down the road as any rubber item usually goes. There's always that degradation, uh, degradation of the material itself where you, you start seeing like little cracks and splits happening in it. So far, so good. Knock on wood. I haven't any problems with the first Wonder Woman that we got. Let's talk a little bit about the deluxe figure release. Now, the deluxe version comes with two extra things, one of which being the robe, which we haven't looked at yet, and the second thing being the Amazonian mother box, which looks really good, and equally so, it's very heavy. It doesn't feel like it's metal, but there's something to it that makes it feel weighted. I can't imagine if it's just solely plastic. It's got some fantastic detailed sculpts here. Even though it does look like Perhaps all the facings are identical to one another. One another doesn't look like there's anything different between them. Got some immaculate details, especially in the corners. I really like that quite a bit. The colors are nice, almost cranberry, borderline purple, red color. And like, even unfortunately, nothing moves on it. Nothing opens up, which would be a nice feat as well. This alone would entertain for anybody, I would think, wanting to get the deluxe version over the standard release. When we eventually get ourselves Cyborg, which as far as I know, up to the point of reviewing this figure, I don't think Cyborg has been announced. So far, we've got Batman in the waiting list, if you will, a tactical Batman, tactical suit Batman, a, a Superman, and a Flash, and also Aquaman. I think the only one we haven't seen yet is a cyborg but it's wondering i'm wondering at the very least if those figures are going to come at least if you get the deluxe versions are going to come with their own corresponding mother boxes if you're going to get one with wonder woman you'd like to think that you could complete complete the trio by getting the other corresponding two in the meantime though it's a really neat looking box and something i'm going to display alongside the figure the figure also gets a robe and i know i don't sound too impressed by it because I, I am but it's just such a pain to get on her the material feels almost as if it could be velour um, it does have a velour feel to it and there's a little bit of like this faux fur that is fitting its way around the arm sockets and down the front trim up to this point a lot of people who had collected and picked up the Batman v Superman Wonder Woman were forced to try to find the means to get this. I think there was a Barbie, Mattel Barbie Wonder Woman that had a robe and a lot of people were makeshifting a robe by going about that way. Um, it does look good on Wonder Woman, but I will say it is a pain in the butt to get on her. Um, there's a couple of different things on it. Like for example, there's this internal strap, which I can't tell whether it's actually come off or not. I think it's supposed to be on the inside here and it's supposed to loop around her waist. Then she's supposed to feed her arms right through the armholes here, and then this front loop, which I don't find works well at all, is supposed to, let me just show you right here, it's supposed to slot inside that little slotted opening there. The robe is really as easy to put on as one would think. You're simply just sliding Wonder Woman's arms through the openings in her arms, or the openings in the robe. Uh, and then that's it. I mean, there is that the little strap on the inside, which for mine just happens to have come off. There is Velcro on the inside, so I'm guessing there's probably like Velcro, you know, corresponding pieces on the interior of the robe. And then this is just supposed to loop around her belt, just like that. If you're closing off the robe, though, you're really not going to see it. And then you're supposed to kind of close the robe off and then take this strap... And it's supposed to feed, it's supposed to feed right through this slot here. I don't know why specifically they had to do it this way as opposed to just giving Velcro. Because it would work really the exact same way. Here you're supposed to feed it through that little slot and it's supposed to attach to, I'm guessing, the corresponding belt on the inside there. But it's just unnecessary, and a lot of times I feel like the, this strapped harness 
just comes loose way too often. They should have put like a little Velcro piece or something right there. So you, it just doesn't seem like it sits well. And oftentimes I'm just feel like I continue wanting to adjust it and then I have to kind of close the robe and then I have to adjust that a little bit more again. Let's just say it's not the, it's not the most enjoyable thing to have to do. And then you can just go, go ahead and just kind of fix off the rope from there. Now there is a hood. The hood is wire framed. So you can, if I don't drop it, you can drape it over top of her head like that. And being that it's wire framed, you just sort of want to bend the sides. Just kind of manipulate it like this until you get yourself the desired look. Now you can either have her hooded like this I think I probably will end up just displaying it with the hood down myself. And you may just have to kind of go in there and fix the hair in the process. The robe, I have to say, does look good. Whatever frustrations I have with this strap on the front, I do like the overall look. It's also enough too, and the hands usually will pop off in the process. It's enough too that it gives you some differencing of, of design between this one and the one that we looked at before. Just get the arm in place, there we go. And if we just move this one over again and bring in the Batman v Superman release, right off the bat, you've got this changing up the way it's gonna look. So it's not gonna be the most, you know, it's not gonna be the identical body side by side with really just the head being the difference. I like this head with this body a little bit more than I like this first starting entry for Wonder Woman, that I probably will end up taking the robe off this one and displaying it with this Wonder Woman instead, just because I do think that this is still a better looking head sculpt. Again, between that and the mother box, there's enough reasoning why I would say getting the deluxe version is more worth it than just getting the standalone release. Now that we've had a look at the figure and we've had a look at the exclusives, let's look at the accessories that come included with this Wonder Woman. She gets a series of different lassos of truth. This one just happens to be more like the threading and it's also bound shut. There's no real reason why you would wanna unravel it and this one here, you can display on the figure by just opening up this little clasp. I thought this clasp was gonna be a problem and I almost would have said in the course of the review that I wish this was Velcro. Now I find myself perfectly fine with it because what I thought was gonna be a nightmare of closing all the time actually isn't at all. There's just these small enough little blips that surprisingly do a good enough job of closing and staying shut. I really did think that this was gonna be a nightmare to close. And looking at the two figures, this one actually closes a lot better than the one that we got with the Batman v Superman. The lassos are also slightly different. This one here is a much more finer threaded one. This one feels almost more like wiring when you really look at the two side by side. She also gets these variations of the lasso, which are more in plastic than they are the threading. These are ones that you definitely do not want to be bending because you're going to be developing stress marks in these. There, there's no wire to them. There's no, uh, there's nothing that you can manipulate to them and bend them the way that you want them. They're pretty much as you see them is how they're going to be displayed. And for the fact that they're also not wiring, it means that you could not display her as if she's throwing out the loop of the lasso around somebody. It just simply would not hold. It's gonna, it's just gonna run limp. Um, instead, you're gonna wanna display them gripped in, in her hands. And she comes with two variations of that. The variations really aren't that drastically different from one another, one of which looks like she could actually grip it more so kind of around her fist while holding the other one. This one here, however, is just more like the, the additional uh, lasso just kind of running on its own. Um, I think I, uh, of the two, I actually like this one a little bit more. Again, if you take like one of her gripping hands, let's grab one of those hands right now, and we can open up the hand, just kind of wedge it in between. There we go. You can kind of hold it like this, for example, and then the other one she could kind of hold back. It does look really good. Um, again, you just can't do any bending of this. It's solely plastic 
and being that it's also plastic, could be more likely to break on you. Also included, she gets herself the Amazonian shield, which I'm just reaching off camera here. Here's what the original Wonder Woman shield looked like. It's not really that much different. This one's a little bit more darker in color than the one we initially got. Now there's the back side of it. And again, there's really not much different other than just a, a different swap out of paint. One good thing about this release, however, is they give you clips so you could actually display Wonder Woman with her shield on her back. This is something that unfortunately the other one was unable to do and just involves taking these little clips and looping them on the belts like that. You may want to even just like move the hair out of the way and then take the other one and it loops on the top. This loop also serves as, I'll show you in a second, where the sword is going to be placed. And then from there, you're just going to take the shield, just loop it over top of the one clip. You really even don't need the secondary clip to help, but it's there anyways just to support. And get that in place, and then she can hold the shield like that. This is also something that could be easily transferred over to the original Batman v Superman release, so if you do want to display her with those clips, you can do the really the exact same thing, um, although you're just going to place them differently. One clip is going to go here, and then one clip is going to go here. This one's going to sit a little bit more on an angle. You can sort of cheat by putting the clip just there, and then and very carefully sitting the shield against it. If you can't work working with the more angled loop right here, she also comes included with her sword, which we just reach off. There's the sword that came included with Wonder Woman. My biggest struggle is trying to remember which one came with the Justice figure, the Justice League release of Wonder Woman. Actually, now that I think about it, I think the one with the blue handle is the more recent release, and the one with the more lighter colored hilt is the original release. Either way, though, one could easily see that the both the hilts as well as the blades are identical to one another, right down to the scripture that has been etched into the blade itself. Assuming that this is the correct sword, let's go ahead and spin the figure around, pop the clips off, mindful that you don't drop the clips. I'm just gonna take that right off. And there's a loop on the top, and there's a loop right there. You can take the sword, feed it through the top, and feed it all the way through. Might be easier just to lay, stand the figure up there. And then it feeds right through the bottom loop there. And you can display the figure like this. Now the shield, in theory, you could still clip on. You're gonna have a little bit more of a problem competing with now the sword being there. But what you can also do then is just take the clip, attach it to the bottom, and then only harness it right there and run it in place. Um, you can sort of work it out that it's still going to support it. Um, what you can also do too is run the clip on first and then try to slide the sword through, which is also something that does work. Although there, like I said, there's not as much clearance happening on the top there to fit both. Just to show you that it is doable though, you can fit the clip and the sword in place. You just got to be really careful when you're putting the sword through that you don't accidentally bump the clip off. And then we go ahead and take the shield once again and just clip that in place. And you can see that she does hold both the shield and the sword on the back of her strap here. These are pretty cool, but a little on the disappointing side, she comes with these ricochet bullet effects that you can add to her uh, bracelets of submission. The unfortunate thing about it though, and it's maybe only on my figure, but I've noticed that it's only on one arm. We go ahead and slide off this bracelet, put the figure right there. You'll see that there is this strip inside of, of a magnet. This will allow you to take these effects and they'll usually be prone to sticking to themselves and you can attach them to that strip of magnet. It's unfortunately that it's only just one strip so you sort of have to line it up correctly that it doesn't fall off. And it doesn't really go anywhere. Unfortunately though, it's not on that bracelet. If somebody has picked this figure up for themselves, let me know if you have it on both, fi on both figure bracelets. I've only got it on the one though. And if they've only done it on the one, I would ask the question then, why wouldn't they have done it on the second one as well? I mean, she does have four of these of various different shapes and sizes. Why wouldn't they have made it 
the available means to just put it on that one. I guess a workaround to it is I could probably go to like a store, supply store, uh, like a, a Staples, and I could probably buy myself like a little stripping of magnet tape and feed it through that secondary gauntlet just so that both of the bracelets of submission would actually be able to support these. For the time being, my figure, and possibly my figure alone, can only do it on the one side. Speaking of the bracelets of submission, she also does have the charged up versions of them as well, similar to what we got with the Batman v Superman release of Wonder Woman. These are identical to the ones that come defaulted to her, other than these are made of more of a translucent orange plastic, just to give it the look that it's glowing and pulsating after storing energy. And of course the figure is going to have a whole bunch of interchangeable hands as well. I got to come clean about something. She does come with a pair of relaxed uh, palms, as you can see right there, bandaged up around the wrist area. She does have a pair of lasso holding hands. And then she also has a pair of closed fists and a pair of open hands or gripping hands. Unfortunately, at the time of shooting this video, uh, I dropped and I'm trying to currently locate the other pairing hand to the ones that currently are in her socket. So she does have a pair of closed fists. She has a pair of gripping hands. She has a pair of lasso holding hands. And she's also got a pair of gripping hands. One thing I do notice about Wonder Woman, or really any figure that has the rubber skin, is that it's a nightmare at times to try to take, there's the hole there of the hand, trying to put that onto the peg, because the skin right there, or closest thing I would just call it is the skin of the, the arm here, sticks a little further out. And it does mean that when you are putting the hand on, you really have to apply a lot of pressure. The best, really, the best rule of thumb is to take the peg off, put it in the hand first, and then put the peg through, as it will get a much better grip uh, already into the socket of the hand area here. Definitely, this is a smarter route to go than what I'm doing, and just simply trying to push it into the socket area, because that skin is going to continue to push back, and a lot of times you'll find that the hands are just popping out on random. Looking at Wonder Woman's articulation. Now you have to be careful still, despite for the fact that you've maybe grown a little bit of confidence since owning the initial release, you still got to be a little bit more mindful when it comes to the figure. Um, her head does tilt up and down. In fact, actually, when you get her out of packaging, you have to add the strap here. So you have to take the head completely off. Uh, the head does tilt up and down and it does rotate side to side. Um, the arms move out. And this is something where you're gonna be a little bit more careful here. Understand that you know you want slow mo motions on this. You don't wanna to get too vigorous with bending the arms outward, but the arms do hinge out. Uh, you can rotate them forward and you can rotate them back, but doing it, just again, be very, very careful that you are moving the arms in a very slow fashion. There goes one of the hands right there. The arms, the elbows that is, do bend, and you do have a swivel on the interior of the, of I'm guessing the bicep will allow the forearm to rotate the way it is right now. The hands would rotate also, although often at times the wrists will pop, the hands will pop right off, but the hands will also rotate back and forth via just the attached peg there. Um, when you get to the torso, you're really not gonna get a whole lot happening right there. Um, because so much of it is encased not only with the skin, but also with the armor that she's got over top of her body. It pretty much limits some, if not all, the posability that you're going to get in this section here. Lastly, for Wonder Woman's legs, her legs split out like this. You can kind of see the inner workings of how it is here. It's almost like a, a little ringlet or a little socket area in which the ball joint sits inside of, and then the skin is over top of that. Legs move forward and back and out, very generously out. Um, she does have a double hinge on the knee, just being very careful of that. And then she does have posability in the feet. Now, luckily, the feet are a separate piece. This part isn't part of this, so you can still freely move the feet. You gotta be careful, though, that you don't accidentally clip the side, as this is a more brittle plastic. Uh, feet also hinge up and down. 
didn't really spend a lot of time looking at Wonder Woman's feet. I guess really because falling into the trap of, well, the ba Batman v Superman release had the exact same similar boots, so I just didn't spend a lot of time looking at it. But the boots are very nicely strapped there, exposing the bare foot and the bare leg on the interior there. Hopefully, this review has helped you guys who have picked up the Batman v Superman release of Wonder Woman and was on the fence as to whether the Justice League version of her was going to be a different enough figure to worth, you know, worth dipping into your wallet and picking up. And I was in that same boat as you. I pre-ordered her just on the off chance that it was going to be a better head sculpt. Usually, time has told us that with new hot toy releases of the same figure that the head sculpt tends to get better and better. But still, when I pre-ordered her and I was paying off those last few installments of her, I was still on the fence as to whether this was going to be enough of a change that I didn't waste my money on her. So I did what everybody else does. I looked on YouTube and I checked out various different reviews of her leading up to eventually her arriving in the mail. And in all honesty, depending on the lighting and the way that the camera was shot for those reviews, I found that the face drastically changed. In some reviews, it looked pretty good. Other reviews, with the lighting being at it was, as it was, the face looked off. So I was still on the fence. And then eventually when she did arrive and I did the comparison between her and her original release, I did notice that this was a much better head sculpt. I still don't think it's as good as the training armor Wonder Woman, but I do think it is a vast improvement to the original one that we got with Batman v Superman. This is sort of one of those cases where you may have wanted to wait to get a better looking Wonder Woman, but who's to ever really say when a new figure is going to be released? At the time of Batman v Superman, maybe we didn't know there was going to be a Justice League and we didn't know there was going to be a, a Hot Toys version of Wonder Woman. So we eventually, we jump at the first thing that we see. This is a case where I think if you haven't already picked up the Batman v Superman Wonder Woman, most definitely pick up this one. If you've already picked up Batman v Superman and you think to yourself, still, I don't know if there's enough changes between this one and the previous one to worth picking it up. My argument would then be say, what I would say is, I would probably pick up the deluxe version. At the very least, you're getting yourself the, uh, the mother box. That's one good plus. But you're also getting her, her shrouded robe. Which means that if you are somebody that had already picked up the Batman v Superman release of Wonder Woman, you could at least use the robe on one of them still to make her look drastically different. I probably would still use the robe on the Batman v Superman release of her just because I think that's a, a more inferior head sculpt of the two Wonder Woman side by side. This one looks a lot better in the head sculpt. It looks a little bit more like Gal Gadot that I would more likely just display her as Wonder Woman. they will probably use the robe then for the Batman v Superman release. Or I might even just use the training armor Wonder Woman, use that head sculpt and display her with the robe because I think that's, a, that's overall a better looking head sculpt. This one's pretty close. And to be fair, and in its credit, it's better than the one that we did get before. So take my wordings with a grain of salt. If you still are on the fence about picking this one up for yourself, uh, just kind of hold off. Just kind of let it simmer for a little bit. Maybe you're perfectly fine just having the original release and that's enough for you. Or you could also hold off and see what we're going to be getting with the 84 Wonder Woman. If we're going to be getting a new Wonder Woman... It's probably likely we're going to be getting another Hot Toys, although it probably won't be this armor. So it's always that that gamble uh, picking up a new six scale figure release. Either way, though, if you're interested in picking up this one for yourself and hopefully this review has helped, you can swing on over to Sideshow Collectibles. Sadly, though, Wonder Woman is now slated and is currently set as a pre-order. So I don't know if maybe the initial run of her uh, sold out that, that it's now on a pre-order. But what you can always do, too, is you can do what I did. You can pay in installment plans. Uh, my installment plans for Wonder Woman, I think it was about five different payments. And then the last payment happened this month, October. And as soon as I paid that last installment, she arrived in what I can only guess is as around three days. Three days later, after paying that installment plan, Wonder Woman was already at my mailbox. So one thing that's good about Sideshow Collectibles is they're really fast at shipping stuff. Hopefully, though, and like I said, this review has helped as best as I could possibly do to show you guys the differences between the two Wonder Woman. 
And uh, from there, it's entirely up to you guys if you want to pick this one up for yourself. If you guys haven't had a chance to subscribe yet to this channel, what are you waiting for? There's certainly going to be more six scale figure reviews coming soon. And uh, of course, um, as we're speaking right now, I'm paying the last few installment plans. I think Flash is slated next. Possibly Flash, or I think Aquaman. I have to go back and double check my, my shipping calendar. Of course, when he gets released, or whoever gets released next, you can look forward to seeing a review of that. Even though the movies haven't done all that great for DC, I have to admit, though, that the Hot Toys releases of them have done really good at capturing the likeness of them. And in this case, I think this one captures it better than the one that we got before. Today we were having a look though at the Hot Toys. This was the Justice League version, the deluxe version of Wonder Woman. And uh, as always guys, thanks for watching as you always do. Let me know down below, by the way, if you picked up this figure for yourself, what do you think of the figure? Do you think it's a better vast improvement to the one that we got before? Or there's really not enough changes to it to really warrant getting this one. You might just stick with the one that you had before. Either way guys, love reading your comments down below and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.